It is 10.01. We'll call this meeting Wichita County Commissioner's Court to order. Y'all would join me in a moment of prayer. Father God, we come together always humbled by the fact that we know how blessed we are as individuals and as a nation. And yet, as all spoiled children, we beseech of you to forgive us of our sins, to guide us, to help us to understand and to share and to do as you command us to do, which was to love one another as ourselves. And it's in that thought we reach out and we think about the men and women in uniform throughout multiple kinds of services that serve in harm's way each day, unbeknowing what their fate might be. Father, we ask that you guide us and forgive us. We thank you for the blessings that you have brought of the rain and the filling of our lakes. And we continue to ask you to watch over our land. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Y'all will join me in pledge of allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now the Texas pledge. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee. Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you. Take your seats, please. Please. I'd like to call on Wichita County Auditor, Ms. Deborah Stevens. She has an introduction she wants to make for us. Um, good morning, everyone. I'd like to introduce you, Devin Gannon. Devin is, uh, has been with our office for 10 years, about a year and a half, and he started um, in our accounts payable group. You all all know him because he does processes your bills. He is a degreed accountant from Midwestern State University. All right. And uh, we were lucky to snag him last year when he was looking for a job. Uh, we've had some uh, turnover in our office, and so uh, we're going to be mixing all of our jobs and cross-training everyone. And Devin is going to move up in the ranks, and he is going to take Matt's position as budget analyst uh, for our office. And Matt is going to move to the internal audit division. So Devin will be the new face that you all see here. And he will, um, and we have a new person that's going to be processing your bills also. Her name is Sequoia Amy. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to make sure that you all, all knew Devin. And uh, Matt will still be coming for a while to help him make the transition. But Devin's going to be your new contact person. Well, thank you. Right. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. We thought maybe Matt was moving up to the majors or something. <laughs> well, kind Devin, of. Devin, have you set for your CPA exam yet? I have no idea. My daughter's exactly where you're at. She's really? got right there. She's just waiting to take her CPA exam. I need to. Yeah, so does she. <laughs> <laughs> she does a great job at the base. So. She probably says the same thing, but maybe I'll Let me take a moment, though. Matt, we appreciate everything you have done for the court. You respond to us readily, and you never laugh at our questions. You might grin a little, but you, you know, you go on and, and do a great job for us. And uh, moving into uh, internal audit will be probably a really broadening thing for you. And you've got to work for that horrible taskmaster, Linda. But uh, <laughs> you know, she learned from Deb. So <laughs> what can you say? But no. We, we appreciate what you all do provide to the court and to the county uh, in general. So thanks. And Matt has always been a great help to me, too. Yeah. yeah. All right. Here That's good. Y'all are welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting. But if you've got other things to do, we understand that, too. All right. Thank you. Could I ask the court to uh, take action on the consent agenda? Judge, having reviewed the consent agenda on Friday and again this morning, I'd make a motion that we accept the consent agenda as posted. Okay. Second. Motion by Commissioner Mahler, second by Commissioner Gonzalez to accept the consent agenda as presented. Any comments or questions? Yes, sir. I, I do. Yes, judge. sir. Uh, item number 12. Yes, sir. Is, are we sure that we want to do this without um, reviewing some option? Uh, this was Mr. Hampton. Do you want to speak to that? You've met work closely. This is on the, our bank depository contract. What kind of options would you think it would be? <coughs> When's the last time we bid it, Bob? Well, that's been a while. Four years ago? But, uh, Four. The American National Bank uh, is, does an outstanding job. There's no charges. <coughs> uh, Commissioner Harvey, I understand, asked uh, my chief deputy about bank charges. Uh, 
There are no charges. Right. And typically not in any government. And then, and then some. Right. Uh, well, case in point, when our software collapsed, uh, and uh, they were right there, stayed uh, till after hours, till after after hours. Right. Mm -hmm. That got us a payroll out. It's 10 o'clock, wasn't it? Wasn't it? At least, yeah. if not more. So, I mean, I we can go out, but who is it? Uh, there aren't any local banks that have the capability of doing what American National does. And, and, and uh, quite frankly, there aren't any national banks that I'm aware of. That, uh, yeah, just the two recently that I've been involved with that went out to bid that First Bank came in very, very strong. Um, and they were replaced. They replaced American National with First Bank. And so that's why I wonder, you know, what what is out there that we don't know about or we're not taking advantage of is there. First Bank, uh, I've tried several times to put money with them. Uh, they turn me down every time. Uh, I know some of the directors out there. Uh, uh, American National is just great game to play with and why would a bank turn we would not be improving our position that's that's my job to make sure that you guys know that and so that's my input Bob just out of curiosity why would a bank turn down a deposit I have no idea I've never heard of that before <laughs> Commissioner Watts the other thing the the contract is bid for four years with a, the law allows for the optional two year we will have to go out for bid the next time. So this is this is within this the is window of four years. Okay. Well, the, the four years plus two would be a total of a six-year contract. Uh, but it, it does have an auto, the law allows for you to go ahead and carry over for one more term. So we finished our four year that we looked at. Yes, this sir. is this is headed two more years after that. Right, which is allowable by law. But next time around, it will have to go out for bid. But we haven't had a great number of bidders uh, for that. Well, no, there are certain hoops that you have to jump through because these are municipal dollars. Uh, the interesting uh, banking commission, not only in Texas, but also the financial uh, well, anyway, my brain's going to kick in here in a minute, but anyway, <laughs> we're, uh, we're doing, if, if I thought there was any room of improvement, I'd be the first to be telling you. Oh, I'm, I'm certainly not knocking the job that American National does. I just didn't know if it was prudent to, to take a look at after we finished the original agreement of four years to take a look at uh, what else is out there because the game has changed all the way around the block and these are tax exempt dollars I know and it, it it's a, a different burden for different uh, institutions as far as having a bunch of money and having the pledges against that money that are they're required to do not everybody wants to pledge uh, you put in 50 million nobody wants to pledge 50 million uh, insecurity against well, they actually have to sure. in county I'm not sure about others but 110 percent I believe is the number they have to have against our deposit so uh, you know and when money was making money that was not a bad deal always but uh, it's not the case now just so you'll know American National has an investment capability out there through their through their investment firm Satira that they're Coordinate with. I'm not aware of anything at any uh, bank. Well, I mean uh, that's not true. But First National, of course, has an investment capability, uh, but they don't. Uh, they they <laughs> they really don't want our full-time business. Okay. All right. Thanks, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Any, anything else? Anyone on the consent items? Okay, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries 5-0. We are down to item number one, uh, review and approve the emergency and regular bills. Judge, I've, I've reviewed and make a motion to approve the emergency and regular bills for payment. I'll second that, Judge. Okay, thank you. 
Motion by Commissioner Gonzalez, second by Commissioner Mahler to approve the emergency and regular bills. Any comments or questions yes, on the sir, bills? Yes, sir, Judge. I sir. did have a comment, please. Mm -hmm. I noticed that in our bills, we are still attempting to pay AT&T for charges uh, not removed from the bill. And we've got to get this shut down. Okay. Um, I saw an email about that. I sent it back, asked did we had, <coughs> okay. When someone on the court starts the ball rolling and you, you've got to follow it all the way through. And there was a question we talked about in here with EMO, whether we were sure those lines should be terminated. Mm -hmm. I sent an email back and said, be sure and check that out. And then we send the auditor the termination notice. The, and the member of the court that starts that needs to, to follow through with that. That's all I'm saying. But that was the only question that came up. But I didn't see anyone resolve that. Well, uh, I mean, the the way that it needs to be resolved is whoever's in charge of our AT&T account needs to drop <coughs> the charges. Okay. Who is that? That's this body right here. Okay. And when the questions started being asked about looking into that, we got there, then I, I looked to that person to finish it. If you all want me to do it, then I need to know that. But well, well, in yeah, all I fairness, if you know. want me to do it, I need to know it too, because well, I, I, I would have taken I, I care. I totally of it. agree. I didn't. Okay. Have any I just assume that uh, the people that manage that stuff would have executed on our court ruling. Well, the trouble is we don't have some of those things as signed, Commissioner, the way we probably, we might want to look at doing and, and make a clear court order that tells the auditor then, yeah, we want to terminate those lines. But well, we just know. wasted another $3,000 because of lack of communication. Okay, so let's just work forward to, to improve on that. Okay. Okay. All right. Then who's going to get that ball across the line? Well, I have sent Judy Malone the information, and I, of course, out of all of this stuff, I've not been told by anyone that more needed to be done. I sent Judy Malone the, the audit from Ripley. Yeah. I've sent her the emails from emergency management. And uh, Okay, so surely, we're clear to cut those, those off then. Well, I would think so. Okay. Uh, that, right. Would you follow them up sure, on that? Sure, okay. you bet. I, I had a couple of other questions. Okay. Um, the we Bass Computers IT had a couple of hundred items purchased out of Bass Computers, and I'm assuming that's hard drives that go into our deals. But it caught my attention. Do you? Does anybody know? They do rebuild. It's about eight thousand dollars. Yeah, and now I would say that's a fairly normal expenditure. Uh, when they're gonna, they bring them in, they'll upgrade it, and we save money when they do that. Ashley has that talent and does that for us. They generally buy a, a supply of components. I think several times through the year, Judge, if I recall. Yes, sir. For kind of inventory. Yeah, work and then with. as they bring those machines in and refurbish them, they pull them off the shelf and use them. I think that was one of those those stocking deals to get their components in in house. I believe is what it was. Um, the sales tax is on our flood um, center bill. Aren't we exempt from paying sales tax on that? The problem with that is that the owner of that building paid the bill and expects to be reimbursed. I see. Yeah. yeah. Well, so it's on our account. Otherwise, you'd be correct. Okay. And then I, the other thing, and it's probably something that y'all had already negotiated, but I didn't understand it. What we pay for staff meals in juvie is higher than what we pay for staff meals in the jail. Is that by design? The, okay. Nearly twice as much, and I couldn't figure I it out. I think that had to do with the period the jail was shut down, the kitchen was shut down while they were doing the work in it. I believe that's what those are accountable for. But otherwise, no, I think it's the same meal. Uh, they may be, then they It's 209 at the juvenile center and 111 for the jailers. And that just stood out to me that it was twice the price. Okay, I, then I would have to look into that. Okay. And that's all I had, Judge. 
Good questions. Good looking. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see that one. I know that, I know the period when they were shut down, uh, we had kids wanting in juvenile to eat there. Uh, <laughs> it was a better deal. And better deal. And Judge, I want to uh, reiterate the fact that I appreciate uh, Matt and <coughs> Devin and the auditor's office going through the extra headache because that's where you see this stuff is on those invoices and it is beneficial and I know it's a pain, uh, extra pain, so I appreciate it, guys. Yeah. When you all see things like that, if you get a chance to make the call like on Thursday afternoon or Friday and start finding out maybe, and then what I'd like for you to do is if you get here and you've got your answers, report those kind of things. So that's interesting digging that you came up with that, that difference because I don't recall that in our contract. So that kind of now makes me wonder whether the contract is covering that or how that's, that's happening. And we find sometimes those things just kind of worm in there. I don't know, Willie, do you recall on that? I don't remember a day late for juvenile. So, <clears throat> but there could be some difference in a meal and sometimes uh, a juvenile may have a health need or something that requires a, a different meal. I, I, I'm not sure of that. So that's a good find, but if you'd follow that through for us, I'd appreciate sure. it. Quick question, okay. who, who manages that contract? Is it us? Uh, it's one of those things, the court approves that. The biggest customer that they've got to satisfy is the sheriff. <coughs> and uh, you all get the bill, I think, and then send it, you know, it comes the auger, then comes to you for the review, and then goes back. Yeah, I thought the juvenile was the same rate as our detention officer. Was. Yeah, I don't know. Matt, can you speak to that? Both are really cheap. I mean, yeah. it just stood out to me that, you know, how he itemizes them, right. and I caught mm -hmm. it on two separate when deals. <laughs> we got to charge extra for that. <laughs> well, I wondered if it had to do something with moving those over. I did wonder that day. I don't think you should. It's a little closer than the annex. Yeah. Actually, I think the juvenile, Lisa, or make this, this juvenile come pick up those mills? They no, no, they're no, delivered. They deliver. Lunch, they pick up the bag mills, but all the other mills. No, they don't even do that anymore. They deliver all. Okay. Yeah. No, they don't. Well, once that one they were picking them up, but I guess now they don't. Yeah. They do the juvenile now. JJAP that's over by. Um, what's that? Yeah, they they come and pick those up, but Airmark delivers to juvenile. Yeah. Okay. I was I was blessed to uh, examine some sandwiches that juvenile <laughs> eats, and uh, I would lose a lot of weight if I was in uh, the bulky, because there ain't much there to eat. No. We, we can arrange it. I make a a, a, <laughs> a dag wood where I put about twenty slices on mine, and there was one little old piece of meat on it, and wasn't yeah. much. In uh, my 16 years of doing juvenile hearings, I only had one kid that ever said he didn't want to be released till after he had lunch there. <laughs> and every time, and he was a frequent flyer, but he always wanted to stay for the whatever meal he could, could get. It's sad whenever that's a good meal. <laughs> well, you know, his mother didn't look like a cook to me, but... Um, and his daddy wasn't around anymore, so never trust. Maybe that's where he got his his meals. You know, uh, the number of kids that uh, supplied meals at school, especially for the weekends and things. Mark, this is the new. You have to wonder. Harvey weight loss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's yeah. too old to go in juvenile, yeah. though. <laughs> but not mentally. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I call a question then on the motion by Commissioner Gonzalez, second by Commissioner Baller uh, to approve the emergency regular bills for payment. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, 5 0. Thank you. Item number two is discuss, consider, take action on quote from uh, Hubert for shelving for the walk in freezer in the courthouse jail at a cost of $1,599.41. With payment from 105614466. I can Repair speak on this. Yes, sir, Commissioner Harvey. The uh, 
the racks that we push in and out of the uh, walk-in, I don't know how they are, but they're covered in rust. And that was one of the um, dings that we got on the jail inspection. Uh, one of the racks looked like it had been taken out and painted at one time. It's blue for some reason, but all the paint's coming off of it. Uh, Judge, these racks here are the, the new stainless steel racks and uh, probably should purchase, th this is for four racks, and we probably need to, now the road, purchase four more. But that's what these are. These are rolling metal stainless steel racks that when the food is prepared, put on the racks, put in the walk-in, and then pulled out when it's ready to serve. Okay. I would have also bet those racks that came in that kitchen in 95, that's how old they are. Yeah, they, they're, they're just a little, they're, they're kind of beyond repair. I mean, yeah, there you go. And is that a motion on your part? Uh, yes. My my motion is to accept as stated. I'll second that, Jim. Motion by Commissioner Harvey, second by Commissioner Gonzalez to approve the item of stated. Additional comments and more. Okay, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Over same sign. Motion carries by aye zero. Item number three, discuss, consider, take action to authorize the IT department to purchase one server and one workstation license of Azure uh, ID 7 Enterprise Edition for the Sheriff's Office for ID uh, card group in an amount not to exceed $3,252.99 to be paid from 100.412.3151 computer software. I can speak on this also. Okay. Um, we, in our work session last week, uh, Ashley brought to us uh, a proposal from a Sure ID group. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> the proposal was for $8,064.95, and it included uh, one license. Uh, how do you, one year protection plan for a Sure ID? I'm not sure what a quantity of six at five. I think that's users. Yes. Uh, at $550 a piece, an additional user for Sure Enterprise 7, five of those at $652 a piece. But that was uh, spreading <laughs> the ability to make ID cards um, portable so we can make cards in the field. And it was so that uh, our records, Sheriff's Office, and our EMO could also make badges and what we had agreed was that we would have one location that everybody in the county would receive their badge from and that would be records. Um, this also will allow us to make a template for our department and then save that template. The current software that we have now, uh, when you make a template and you make a badge, there's no way to save that template. It just, when you close it, it's gone. You have to recreate every badge that you make. And this will be, uh, this will be a definitely a, an improvement in our badging operation. And it will allow other departments uh, also to be badged at one location. Our EMO office will need to come and have their badges made at the records office. But we changed that from 8,064.95 down to 3,252.99. Okay. <clears throat> and I make a motion. Lee, yes. is, is that on? Oh, go, go ahead. And make a motion. I was going to say, and I would like to make a motion that we accept item number three as stated. Second. Mr. Gonzalez. Lee, uh, is the card going to be like what Ray Schultz showed uh -huh. us? No. Does, do we need to have that for the uh, regular employees? No, not really. That's more of a yeah. law enforcement card. Yeah. See, well, won't you be able to make a template? Badges for like say the trailer's office employees, and, you know, every every county employee can have a badge made. Uh, right. Either card for their. Well, children. Barry and I'd like to have uh, some identification for sure. Uh, during the flood, we didn't have any ID. We could, you know, tell a highway patrolman that's from out of the county that you know, hey, we're we're the commissioner. We want to go in. He's but, looking at me in an old pickup and some bib overalls. I don't think he believed me, but he let me in anyway. You know, like that one that he, that the sheriff people have, 
uh, they're not displaying it to where if you're an employee, you'd want to have to display. Yeah. yeah, something that you can clip on. And we can design the cars any way you guys want to. If you want something specific for a department, if they want to come down and have something specifically done, picture or whatever, put on it, something in the background, we can do that. That's not a problem. And this way, with this new software, we'll be able to save a database for commissioners, for uh, the treasurer's office if they want them if JP's office will be able to save their data in that and will be able to save their template so if they get a new employee when they come down there it'll already be made all we have to do is add to the database because wouldn't those that you have be more expensive to make than the one that you just hang on a, uh, if he wants a slotted machine. card with a clip and that's just uh, it doesn't have it no, we can, we, with the software that you're buying, you can either do it one-sided or two-sided. It'll all be the same. So, you don't know, it'll, it'll all cost the same. All you got to do is punch it and We just it. have to figure out what you want on your card, and we can design it. Okay. We have, we have some employees that use our cards in a lanyard. They have a, basically a little name tag, and they stick it in the plastic and put their keys with it. They just wrap it over their neck. Use a key card to get in the door and have their ID card. Well, some of the departments have mentioned they'd like to have them on their personnel so we can put out that information. The only thing I'd suggest is, I know law enforcement has a standard card. We ought to look at a standard card. I don't care if it has the county seal on it and then says Treasurer's Department, Treasurer's even, Office. Uh, even, we could even but this, code yeah. each department. You know, all yellows would be clerk's office. Green would be the Treasurer's Office, you know. Well, I, I don't think that every county employee needs a, a, a badge if they're set behind a desk in a courthouse. But if you're going out into the public, and it's like my my precinct guys, if they go up and knock on the door, they need to have some identification that that person knows that this is a county employee. So that, other, I, I other, recommend all your road crews, everybody have a call. Yeah, that, that was the mentality. Yeah. But actually having all county employees have them, then the, if they would, if their department had wants them to, and they're aware of them. But you've got other people, let's say during a flood time, if that happens where county buildings are and they need access, the law enforcement person says, I'm sorry, I have no reason to believe you have reason to go in there. They show that and it says treasurer's office on it, then they'd have a good idea that person needs to go or it says auditor's office, they need access to uh, the office. And I think that would be a good thing, but I don't, I'm, I don't think we need to say, okay, every county employee has to have one. Right. Well, we can sure make it available to department heads and I, I, absolutely. But let's come up with be just a single front page with a picture of the county seal and their name and name the date of birth or something. Whereas like law enforcement, we have to have both sides. We have to have them. Well, I've seen a lot of the cards like in the refinery since their actual scan badge. Right. That's how they get in the door. Depending on what kind of car again, we could we could do that too. Exactly. All right. Let's just try to get to square. Well, we got square one. We're going to buy it. Square two, but let's don't have twenty eight different cards for each different. Yeah. You could title it, but let's let's stick to the same format. Right. Because then people wonder who made that card. You know. I, yeah. I know the I know EMO wants to be able to do it for the county fire departments, and I think last time I remember that was done. I think you were commissioner in precinct one. This might be had Polaroid still, and then we were, they laminated them. Each fire department had one, had the silver fence uh, in the front of what department we worked with. Yeah. And uh, it just had an expiration date was upon uh, basically uh, termination on the fire department. Do you have a problem with those fire department uh, volunteers coming to records and having a badge made? Well, uh, they probably would merge management do that. Pardon uh, That way, that merge yeah, management maybe. can do theirs, because they actually, they'll probably go up. We're just buying one. We're not buying two. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, he still has a, a well, but that to make was my next right question. Now. My next question, though, was the printer that's there, and I know they're unique to the cert, to the card process. Instead of that setting on that equipment, and letting it become obsolete. I mean, is there Ray? Is your Card deal enhanced with having that equipment. We can we can actually put this software on a on a, 
laptop. That won't be a problem. We can take it, we can move all the stuff that we have with it, the printer and everything can go with the laptop. As long as we got a VPN into the system, we can we can make cards work. Well, what I'm use. saying is we own two printers. EMO My and yours. understanding. Mm -hmm. Now, the one at EMO, I'm not sure, but from what I was told, it'll work with the software. That's what Ashley said in court. So, if they need to come get the laptop and they go to a meeting for a fire department, they can come get it and they can do it. That way they can go out to each fire station. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got gotcha. you. To bring all those guys That's a good water. idea, Ray. Okay. Real good. Okay. Do we need to buy a special laptop to do that? Are we going to have to spend three thousand more dollars? I think we I already think, have a laptop. I think we should have laptops down there that work. So as okay, long as it's good got deal. the software on it that we need, we shouldn't have to buy another. Okay. It, it would be nice to be able to repurpose <laughs> oh, no, something. Yeah, I think it's pretty good at repurposing. I promise you. Well, Judge, just follow up on this question then, and it really not pertaining to the vote we'll take here. But do we need to come back next week and and have a court order that? flows the ID cards through records then so that we're clear about how that will work or set up that procedure needed a that procedure. Much about. I don't know as we need a if that's where the sheriff would control that and set up however he wants his policy to be on that and then I think the interaction is and you go to the courts liaison to the personnel committee is maybe talk about in there but I, I think that's going to be up to each department head to decide do they want IDs for their people. But Well, no, I mean that keep, the EMO has the ability to print cards today, and but don't we want it flowing through the saved template software, the yes. saveable software? Yes. But I think between the lieutenant and, and EMO, they can work that out. The sheriff said, you know, he's okay with that. Then they can bring the fire departments in you know, as they need to on it. I thought I heard General Custer's reinforcements coming. Um, there is not a laptop to load that on. What happened to all the laptops that we replaced, replaced and we had some? And no, no, it was desktops we replaced with laptops. Is that what, up in the DA's office that we replaced? I think that's the only okay, I think that's what I was thinking. We <laughs> is there not a laptop in the EMO that would work? Yeah. That's why we had suggested the two. The two would be one for EMO to have on a laptop, and then Ray could have his on his computer. <coughs> but there, there's not a laptop existing in EMO right now that we can use yes. for that function. It's their personal computers. Yeah, their their computer, their laptop is their personal computer. They have two laptops to allow them to take them out the field with them. And no laptops in the emergency command center? No, no sir. In the sheriff's in, in ID section. I think we're getting things mixed. Okay, EMO has a printer right now, and they have laptops, but they do not have the current up-to-date software, and we would need a license for them to have it on that laptop and for the desktop down here in the ID section, yes. correct? and I need to look I thought you said a couple of weeks ago it uh, did. He gave me the wrong model number. Oh, okay. So I'm checking on that. But I know for a fact the race works. Okay, then let's go ahead and get this done. And then if we need to look at revising it and whether printer, then we may make that decision separate is my suggestion. No. Let's, okay, let's be clear what we're doing. We're buying $3,200 worth of ID software. Yes. Okay. That's, that's not two licenses, two different lo locations, and six users. It's one. It's one user. Yeah. And somewhere I have seen that we're going to be buying a, a laptop for something from somebody. Is it Judge Butler's laptop? Did we just upgrade that, give him a new laptop? Where's his old laptop? Uh, it's been disposed of. It's, it's replaced because it's I mean, it, sure glad they don't have rules on like that for you, Judge. I know. <laughs> my, my laptop I've had for six years. It works great, and it would run badging software all day long. Yeah, but, you know, playing solitaire on it's not quite I don't play solitaire. <laughs> it was still Did it work? It depends on who you ask. Was it XP? Uh, no, it was actually one of seven. 
Oh, okay. I mean, it'll never use memory on it. I think that's why the minimum requirements to run that software. We need to table this for a week and get our information together. Yeah. Well, can, you, can know, you buy an $800 laptop to run this software on? Can you go to Dell and order a laptop for 300 bucks, put an operating system on it, and load this software on it, and not spend $3,000 on a laptop? Can we do it? Sure. Okay. It's not something I would recommend, though. Durability or just a You're willing to take a laptop out in the field that's not really durable. No, no, we're not. We're, 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 we're talking about taking a laptop to a volunteer fire department, setting it on a table in there, and making some badges. We're not going to be making any, using this laptop, laying in the ditch while it's raining. Okay. Well, I would not recommend purchasing a laptop that's not spec'd out for at least five to six years' life. I mean, if you want to put this on Ray's computer and use it like that and then buy another license to try to find, and I can try to find a laptop that will work. But ideally, I would not recommend it being full use to make badges 100% of the time, no. But you, what's going to happen is, is you're going to buy a laptop that's not made to run those badge software. Okay, but the laptops that are over an EMO right now would support this software. Yes, sir. So we don't need to buy it. It's just whether you're going to buy a second license uh, to have so EMO can do that at the fire station or with the when the weather spotters. The other, they have a number of outside groups uh, that are not as likely to come down between eight and five to Where, get that. Where's Lee on this? I, mean, <coughs> I haven't heard anything from Lee. He was here for the other and was no, he wasn't. Lynn was. Lynn was. Okay. okay. So, because, yeah. I mean, I can be honest, he emailed me and had some concerns about them not having their own license, and I told him they Well, I'm sure they did. So, is it additional user? Mm. Is that what that is at $652.99? Yes. Or is it the. Both. It says one year protection plan for a sure ID Enterprise 2009. Quantity six at five hundred and fifty dollars. Can you explain to me what that is? That's their protection plan. Uh, Why are we buying six protection plans? That's not the correct price. It should have been just two. The three hundred fifty-two dollars. Here's the thirty-three hundred dollars. Yeah, that was a license for the enterprise, <coughs> one user license, nice. and the protection plan. Ooh. Ooh. Ashley, what I'm looking at now is today's instead of last week's. This, this, the $3,252.99 that we agreed upon allows us to do what we're talking about. Yes, sir. One, user, one site license, one user license, and the protection plan, which is what we have discussed. Protection okay. plan on there is for two. Yes, that's a year protection plan for the server license and okay. a year protection plan for the user license. That okay. allows if, if Ray has any questions and needs to know how to make something, figure out how to use it. I figured we could at least purchase it for a year to let us get familiar with it, and then we can drop it after that. Uh, if you were to add a sign for EMO, then we back to another 3252? Uh, no, it would be the 652. And I don't see why we would need a protection plan on it. No. I mean, that would give Ray the ability to ask questions or... Well, doesn't this quote for today include the second site? No, sir, that's just one user license. One user license, one user. And one, the license for the server, which is where the software and the database resides. Okay, in this, you'd only have to buy the, the site license, the 1550, yes, then buy, you're buying one user license, which is here, but you could buy another user license for 652 and have it at EMO. Yes, sir. So if you added $652 to that $3252.99, you would but if the printer doesn't work with it, then yeah, we're looking okay. at another printer. So let's find out about the printer. Ashley? Yes, sir. Let's determine about the printer. Yes, sir. Do you want to do this so we get this deal across? 
we approve the second license provided the printer will support the software if it doesn't then she can come back to us and determine if we want to buy the the appropriate printer and then go ahead and pay the 652.99 but if she finds that the printer will work then we're okay and she's gone ahead and you got this done or we limit it to one operation that's that's what I, today's decision to me is now it, does raise print are you sure raise printer will work yes. with this EMO has three laptops. I mean, we could use it in any of those three if the, if the printer will work. How much are those printers? Do you have any idea? No, sir, I don't. Okay. Yeah, they could be all over the board. Okay. Quick question. Well, they have three laptops and two employees. Yes, sir. Do we not confiscate the one laptop and put the software on that laptop, put it in Ray's possession, let him make badges, and if they need it to go out to a volunteer fire department, they can borrow the laptop? Sir, that is a question for Lee. I think that third laptop is the one that they're using in there to do their presentations with, Judge, yeah, if I recall. I, yeah. No, sir, it's, I, it's in not. his patrol car, in his car. Then I don't know. I he has a Durabook in his car that yeah. sits in his car all the time, yeah. and then he has a laptop in his desk, and Lynn has a laptop on his desk. But there was a there was one that they used. There's one they used they, for a while in there. They yeah. may be older. Yeah, that's been a year or so ago when we had that check. Well, I, I use my laptop for my presentations also. <coughs> I take it from my desk and go plug it in on the conference table and do my presentation. Do there, you don't need two laptops. Okay, let's decide on, on this today that we know about. Yes or no on uh, Is there a motion to support that one? You've been okay. around the mountain. Let me, let, me, let me think about this. This is today's deal, right? Yes, sir. This is for one license? One, one license, one, one user, user, and... That, that's, what, that's what the court had discussed at the work session, and that's the way I'd like to move forward. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let me get it down here. Does EMO currently have a system that will print badges yes. today? So we're going to get rid of that? No. no we're it's gonna an, have older, it's an older it. version of this same it, system. It, it doesn't have a template. Is that the problem? Is that the drawback? Their, their problem is their, their software won't do what they want it to do, and they got that from Homeland Security. It was a deal from Homeland Security for the region, and they were supposed to actually be able to make badges for the whole region. And, and the software yeah. never worked the way they wanted it. Right. It was a company that came in and sold the state on a deal and they passed it down to the Council of Governments and then covered everybody and I think it's that same software they opened Obamacare with. Right, yeah. Now, yeah. If if I, let me up. understand correctly, if I'm going to the volunteer fire department to make them badges, do I take the laptop, capture all the information, and then come back and print those, or do I carry my printer out there too? Carry your printer out there too. Really it's small. It's just small. Well, that's not a big deal. I see. And so, so you make them while you're there at the volunteer fire department, pass them out to everybody, and you don't mail them to them after you've gotten all the information. No, you make it right there on the site, print it out there right there. How many do we make a year? <coughs> Anybody know? I have no idea. We have to have a new badge for our uh, sheriff's office employees every time they. Uh, well, they're hired, but also their qualifications and their continuing education stuff as it changes. I mean, I'm just curious, do we make 500 a year? Do we no. make 10,000? No. Do we make 100? I, just a rough... What EMO did... I think I remember this. What, it's, take that number and add the ones that the new state. The EMO, what they were asking for, the current template they have, will not provide the information that says on a, uh, an e a fireman one, two, three, or a, a, a emergency paramedic or whatever those numbers are, they can't put those on there in the dates. It doesn't allow that, that to be added on there. Uh, I'm not sure how- This software will. You know, they came and provided me one night and I never asked any of them for their ID. Isn't that amazing? 
They were in a red truck. <laughs> and, they were, and they were saving my life. <laughs> I never asked them one of them for an ID. Yeah. <laughs> I swear I'm so are, are, are you are you qualified to do this? <laughs> yeah. All right, Judge, I'd like to make I'm a motion. Sure they were. <laughs> okay. <laughs> to do as stated. Uh, dis discuss, consider, and take action to offer as an IT department to purchase one server and one workstation license of Assure ID7 Enterprise addition for the sheriff's office okay. from ID card group in the amount not to exceed thirty two fifty two ninety nine to be paid from one hundred point four one two point three one five one computer software. I've got your motion Commissioner Watson a second yeah. already. Yeah. Commissioner Gonzalez started us off on this trail. Well no, you asked a question. I'm just saying that's how we got around there but long enough. But we've got a motion. I already okay. had that written down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So we're going to approve it as read. Yes, sir. Okay. And then move from there. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Most carries five zero. Thank you, gentlemen. Item number four: Discuss, consider, take action to approve purchase order SO 1911 to the Bob Barker Company for Genmate jumpsuits at a cost of five thousand nine hundred eight dollars ninety cents, with three thousand eight hundred thirty one sixty to be paid from. 100.561.3506 clothing and supplies, 2077.30 to be paid from 100.116.2110 detention center improvement fund at total cost of $5,908.90. Sheriff Duke? This is a, these, these jumpsuits are what the inmates wear when they have to go to court, come out of jail, and some location in the jail here. But they, uh, uh, we go through a lot of these because we wash them what, three times a week. So I take a lot of washing, a lot of hard on it. A lot of plus the inmates wear and tear inside the cells, or um, <coughs> it's just continual. Uh, that first part of the number, the uh, thirty-eight, thirty-one, that's how the, the uh, budgeted line item, and the rest of the what we need to get to have the uh, amount of uh, jumpsuits we're trying to get is be paid by the detention center fund. So that way. Is that the commissary fund? The commissary. Yeah. Well, it says the the improvement fund. That's what that's what it is. That's what it, that's what it, that's what it actually is. That's the official. Is. Yeah. Yeah. It used to be called the the, old, the past administration was called the coach fund. You know, because the commissary funds, the bought off commissary, what that fund. There's 14 different names for it, but that's just the, uh, the we call it DCIF. That's the that's the one we we use for that. And, and most of the stuff. Uh, especially some of the equipment like uh, fire suppression or fire rescue equipment that we don't come to court when you all buy $35,000 for new air packs and things of this nature. We, we buy it out of this fund that the inmates, you know, the money comes from the commissary and we label it the DCIF so we know that doesn't, if we sell those air tanks at an auction, that money by law has to go back into that fund. It doesn't go to the general fund. So that's why we have to make sure differentiate what we fund. It's like the vans, the whole fleet out there, yeah, the whole fleet out there has been purchased through money through the DCIF. So if we sell them at the auction, then that money has to be reimbursed back into the inmate fund. And it saves budget on the uh, the line of the, of the records of the coming through a few tax funds. Now you've done as well by that. Okay. What does this this clothe everybody, Dave? What is this? Uh, Sergeant Johnson, this stuff will cover everybody. I mean, it's just take care of our needs, but but it also is going to uh, uh, we'll have extra. You always have to have extra because you, you know, we wear out. How many do you think in a week? <laughs> we're, we're shredding. I've of. prepared over 500 uniforms since August of last year. Oh, 500. And yeah, we've got somebody that we do send out to repair them. You know, the snaps and rips, and if it's something bad, you know, you, you just got to get rid of them. So they're, uh, we get our money's worth out of them. Ray just noticed that you're purchasing some 9X coveralls. Hey, you, know, you gotta be, you wow. to cover everybody. Well, just think if you were in jail, what size they me. Probably just a 2X. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, Slim, I'm sorry. <laughs> now I'm tall, that's all. Yeah, that's, well, uh, that's well, that, 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 that T, double T on it, 2X double T. Yeah, wow. But they're still not expensive. They're $18 a pair. I mean, that's 
pretty some reasonable. Of these, you may see there's a different color on some of these people. Like the, the, uh, we have an orange and white for the trustees that are working inside the jail. And then you see inmates in the work crew outside, they wear the orange pants and orange shirts because they're much cooler than that one piece jump. It gives them more freedom of movement when they're working and doing things. Uh, so we still we still get those. And then we have the, the black and white stripes, which you know which would look great if they stay black and white all the time. But once you don't wash them, that black stripe will start fading into the white. So it's kind of a, a black and light gray of what's over with. And then we have some solid red ones. Those are for our high risk inmates, or level threes we call them. And uh, they come they come out of their cells. They're in, they're in the, the, the red jumpsuits. And we're getting some yellow ones for. Uh, we already have them. For, all of them. Booking. Booking will be in yellow. People that be in booking don't have to be in yellow. So that you don't mistake this guy. He, he this guy who maybe Joe Blow. It looks like the guy that's you know Bubba Jack and by the photos, and then we don't release the wrong guy. We make sure those yellows are staying. The people are booking, and when they transfer out, they change clothes. And get on the black and white stripes. So the process behind the madness to identify these people. We want one of those pink ones. And it's just uh, Do we have these color codes posted, kind of like the? No, because we, no, we don't tell all the inmates what we're doing. I actually wanted to have the yellow jumpsuits originally for the inmate workers outside of the jail because I know everybody referred to them as jailbirds, you know, bright yellow jailbirds, but uh, we had to stay with the orange. So. Okay. All right. Uh, does court desire to take action on this? So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Mall, <coughs> second by Commissioner Harvey to approve the item as stated. Any other comments or questions? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries 5 0. Item 5 discuss, consider, take action to approve the county treasurer's report for May 2015 and authorize county judges and commissioners to sign affidavit certifying compliance with section. 114.026C of the Local Government Code, May 2015. Uh, Mr. Hampton. Gentlemen, you're looking at May this year. Uh, is there any questions? Page one. Okay. Item one, general. 1,360,000 is in parentheses. Yes, sir. Is that a negative balance? No, it's not a negative balance, Commissioner. That, uh, that particular fund represents 43 different accounts. If you look down at the bottom of, of the same page one, you'll see that uh, uh, the 100 account is, is, has significant dollars in it. What I do is I try to keep as much money as I can, drawing as much interest as I can in our general fund account as I possibly can. So there are some funds that we cannot invest. For example, the Sheriff's Forfeiture Fund, uh, the Better Business Bureau, uh, Better Business, uh, Bail, Bond. Bail Bond Board, thank you, Jeff. Bail Bond Board, uh, uh, Homeland Security Grants, uh, Justice of the Peace Funds. We, uh, we just leave them in, a, in their own suspense accounts and but it's all part of that same account Bob is that uh, and I'm a, and I'm available at any time uh, to come up to your office and tell you exactly what's what and uh, there's just I, a lot of information here and yeah, just yeah there glancing is, at it, it is you, a lot of information I you really don't your, your question you don't really it, understand exactly it, uh, what it means that 2.9 million on that tobacco proceeds line, I thought we had closed that account out. We have, and we have. Uh, but we're still segregating it out. Okay, but that's. Oh, I'm sorry. The, the, no, I, I'm just curious. It, 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 you know, it's a big number, and it kind of, kind of jumps out. Yeah. It, if I'm looking at this correctly, it looks as though I don't know which total you go to to get the grand total, but it kind of looks to me like yeah, this. Yeah, the green is right there on the back page. The very far right bottom number. Bottom line, yes, sir. It looks to and me we're, like we're about, we are three, about 1%. Yeah, about three quarters less of a million. than we were. Uh, is what I'm saying. 12 months ago. About three quarters of a million, something like that. 764,000 is what I came up with, just to get an idea of where we were functioning. 
Well, your, your figuring was absolutely spot on. What do we need to do to do better? Quit spending. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. Fair question. Fair answer. Yeah. Okay. Quit spending. But <clears throat> keep in mind, you have paid out that change in balance is a planned change in construction. Yeah, you yeah. can you can see a lot of that 764 in our well you can't you parking lot renovations or parking lot yeah. renovation county clerks uh, absolutely there are reasons for it i mean right. it, yeah, yeah but the quick answer is just yeah i, I understand anyway and well taken and and that's what but, but, but you know sometimes i think we don't ask that question no, I, correct. I mean we really need to ask that question sometimes. yeah and you're on public tv and you know yeah. everybody's watching you mm -hmm. you know we were all of a sudden looking at halfway through the year and we're a million dollars down and don't have an idea why, then I would be concerned. We're having some unexpected expenditures right now due to work going on in the jail. We have people that we are paying other counties to have them housed uh, that we could not meet the uh, classification requirements to keep as many people in our jail because of the way that it's broken down. Uh, Sheriff, am I getting that correct? Or Yeah, that's, you know, when we get up over 500 people, that's lots of tax dollars being spent. Nothing we can do about it, but that's just it. Well, it, it. It's a lot of money whether they're here or somewhere else. I mean, it's, it's a big, big If they're somewhere else, it's even more money. Right. Yeah. But when we get in a twist like that, it's great to have uh, auditors that, uh, and that's the reason you got a guy like me Rather than working for you, I, you know, I work for the taxpayer, so I have no problem telling you exactly how I feel about things. But uh, but you have lots of watchdogs, and we're not spending money, uh, you know, frivolously. You're spending uh, you're spending money to do the your job, road and bridge. Well, with the upgrade of the jail it would despite the fact we're looking downrange at building a new facility you've got to maintain this facility and we got behind on that so we're playing catch up there we're still not going to make that pig look better with lipstick uh, we might get some gloss on it but it's we know the ultimate goal which the taxpayers are going to have to buy into the sheriff has done some good work in informing through the citizens committee commit uh, group to of what the condition is there uh, yeah. you know and we're going to hope to be out of that Sprague facility eventually and be down here and uh, actually produce some of the old space here uh, but you know that's going to come along and we will work with that well for those folks who are listening in though judge you know years ago and i'm not sure commissioner Mahler and commissioner gonzalez was in on this but i was part of the original group that we decided we we're going to build over here and we were sent out for bids and this 40 plus million dollars and you guys uh, retraced your steps and we've uh, improved this old the building but it's uh, I think it's a beautiful building now and they the yeah. taxpayers lost the money well, we, we, and didn't leave a bombed out facility that well we should do uh, that's you know, exactly I mean, that's, 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 we still that's have got some value downtown yeah, that's that's got you get your life uh, okay so could I have a motion then to? Uh, I'd make a motion we accept the uh, uh, treasurer's report uh, as presented to the court and second. authorize the uh, court to to sign same. Still have some clarification. Okay, go ahead. Second, brother Bob. Yes, sir. Help me understand. Total investments. Total investments. Back page, second column from the end. Total investments equals fifty-three million bucks. Okay. Total checking plus investments is about 54 million. So basically the balance in our check checking account is a million something dollars. Is that correct? Well, well, checking account, commission, well, no. You know, well, the, 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 the in our cash the, accounts. The, 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 it's, it's less than that. It's 771,000. Yeah, and that's really nice. But you would also, in that, you mentioned those other funds that have to sit 
in an account. They're not investable. So yeah, those that's are part those of are restricted well, monies, Commissioner. That's I guess. Uh, uh, okay, I'm not talking about that. To put. No, I'm not going. Of, I'm not going there. I, yeah. I understand that. But okay. isn't that part of that total? Yes. Sir. Okay. My question is, if uh, how much money do we have? We can get our hands on immediately. Well, we have a pretty good. Uh, Mark, that's my we question. Have a, we have a nice deal, and I'd be let me bring it up to you, and I'll show you. Okay, I'm just kind of curious to know what kind of operating capital we had outside of our investments. Yeah, the other thing. Good question. Mr. Hampton also schedules those, <laughs> looking at what kind of things we put in our budget, so he schedules when those turn Move over money. to have the cash available to meet. Right. Uh, yeah, cash flow is what you're talking about, Judge, and, and that's that's critical. Do you have a rule of thumb but on work balance with, uh, that you try to maintain? I work with Mr. Wall on that. He tells me, you know, what you have you coming up, especially precinct dollars. Do you uh, have a rule of thumb on a balance you try to maintain in in our funds available? I do have, yes, sir. Do you know what that number? Just a ballpark number that is. Let me come up and show it to you, and I'll be glad to go over all that with you. Bob, does Century Management help us to stay laid out? Do they? How do they play a role into? They provide us with uh, market information uh, primarily, and uh, I use uh, I use them as a sounding board. Uh, all those guys out there are are uh, either have their Series 7 or they are certified financial uh, planners and or analysts like uh, Murphy Davis is himself, a CFA. And they they can tell us, uh, I mean, I'm in communication with them almost on a weekly basis. They do some buying for us. Predominant Investments will go through uh, Satira. Uh, the, the investment part of American National, the Series 7 lady there that helps me with that. She's very, very good. She's been doing it a long time. She was a, a competitor of mine years ago. But uh, she knows her job and, and does it well. Bob, according to the talking heads. And I also visit with Mr. Wall. Some he's of excellent. He is a he's a long term professional investor, and I mean investor, not just. But according to the talking heads on some of the morning shows yesterday, there seems to be an indication that we might finally see some increase in interest rates as this year moves along. I don't, I don't know what. Be glad to give you my opinion of that as soon as we get off camera, Judge. <laughs> <laughs> But my comment was for an, in, an, an, an entity like Wichita County that carries very little debt, yes, sir. Uh, that would almost be a positive thing. Oh, you know, uh, as Murphy uh, Davis has said many times on his annual visit, that's one of our biggest advantages. We have very little debt. Plus, we do have funds available. and. If we wanted to do a, a, a loan for a, a new jail facility, or, you know, there's not going to be any problem doing that at all. Well, I think it, I think that speaks to prior courts and 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 the yeah. current court that they they managed well. It speaks well. to your court. Yeah, and it's yeah. not easy to manage when you've got the demands out there, you know, of day-to-day uh, -day business. It's uh, we have, and we have a great team here at the courthouse. <laughs> Hopefully they'll always be a treat in the court. We have a motion by uh, <coughs> Commissioner Mahler, second by Commissioner Watson, to approve the item. Any additional discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries 5 0. We're down to uh, public comments. Anyone in the audience have anything to bring up? Okay. Any, uh, any of the elected officials, Sheriff? Mr. Hampton, anything additional? Stay in the shade, old. We'll be hot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, commissioners. Uh, Judge, I got a very nice letter from Donna at the food bank, and the board members had uh, put together, they had the staff training over there just re 
uh, recently that they've put their uh, personnel through and then the board had got with me and uh, put a cookout together for the staff and I never thought about it and the letter caught my attention that she wrote a very nice one but you know they feed people all the time that's what they do and they never dawned on them or it was such a I guess a, a nice thing they thought that their board had put together to feed them and so um, it, it's a great organization I just wanted to bring them up or make comment about how appreciative that group was and there were probably 40 of them and and uh, it was very some volunteer I'm sure and some, some regular staff but I want to just comment on the food bank and what a great organization and how lucky we are to have uh, such a a uh, diligent group of people with concern so uh, secondly the caught my eye and I know it continues to uh, gain some momentum in Electra if I'm a, a meat buyer and I'm always watching it who's got the best around and the Scott Strange has a tremendous uh, meat uh, layout in the grocery store at Electra it continues to improve and get better and I'm hearing comments on it all the time but uh, we do a lot of pork roast and gosh they're just price wise is unreal so I, I just wanted to comment on what a good job the grocery store is doing in Electra and what a need they feel. So. If you haven't been in that store lately, uh, Scott has went in there and spent a tremendous amount of money. Uh, bringing that service to Electra, it's the only grocery store in Electra. Right. And he is really, he's stepping up. I'm, I'm, he's also, we've talked to him about helping us with uh, uh, doing like United Street Market and doing the license plate tags in there also, and I believe he's on board with that. Great asset to that community. He really is. So. Judge, is we, that all you got? Judge, yeah. we, 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 we dodged a bullet on fires most of the time over the 4th of July, but we did have several over the weekend, so we're approaching conditions where that's going to continue to be a uh, problem, and we had a lot of our volunteers out working several fires this weekend, some of our county people were also out so just want to remind everybody be cautious out there because even though it's green there's still plenty of stuff to burn and uh, we're in that season and these volunteers don't need practice no <laughs> at all especially when it's a hundred and something degrees correct in a bunker suit it's about 140 absolutely well, I'd like to kind of showcase one of our employees today okay. um, we'll talk a little bit about Don Farmer and the type of individual that he is uh, last March, she was with our county for 30 years, and today, he's been married to his wife, Lynn, for 43 years. Wow. That's the kind of guy you can depend on. I'm very proud to have him as a part of my crew and as, as a part of our county family, and uh, just want to say happy anniversary to, to Lynn and Don, and uh, want them to know how much I appreciate both of them, because when you're married to a county worker, you... You have you make a lot of sacrifices, so just wanted to highlight those two guys or those two folks today, and and make sure that everybody knows. If you know Don, you might give him a call and tell him happy anniversary and tell him how much you appreciate him. Thank you. The uh, you know you mentioned everything green coming back from New Mexico yesterday. <clears throat> They've had more than their share of rain and. Things that are normally brown this time of year, I mean, I'm talking about some of those small mountains out there are green all the way to the top, and you can see trees on top of them wow. uh, growing right out of that lava rock. Uh, but there's been that much moisture, and I don't know whether it's grass or, or mold. <laughs> From that distance, you can't tell. <laughs> they do look green. But... Uh, the other thing is, after you uh, drive their roads, you get back to Texas, you go, thank you, Lord. <laughs> uh, they're uh, really, uh, they do not have what we have. And they, uh, I think New Mexican drivers have two speeds, slow 
and incredibly fast. They're either going 10 or 20 miles below the speed limit or 10, 20, or 30 miles an hour above the speed limit, but uh, they do not seem to register right on the line at all. Uh, Judge, that brings up a very good point. There's a lot of road construction going on in the county right now as we try to repair a bunch of the damage, I think. My crew joined Precinct 1 this morning. They're working on some stuff and trying to get some of these bad spots fixed. And if you're out in the, on these county roads, watch those workers. Well, be and that's busy. true all over the state. Yeah, the west the county summer. roads are a little smaller. And, yeah. you know, while we mark those work zones, sometimes people go by, well, I wonder what that was for. Yeah. And, and uh, it's it's dangerous on them. And, uh, you're going you're gonna to see a bunch the rest of the summer. There's a lot going on. You know, somewhere along the... the here in the next couple of weeks or so, if you all gave us uh, an update on what y'all are doing on the flood repairs and where we are on the sea turrets programs, okay. uh, you know, I, and those may actually overlap each other, uh, but we need to kind of look at that. So maybe a couple of weeks from now, if y'all might have that. Uh, well, not. Judge, currently we we are uh, doing everything we can to get back on our river road project. Yes, sir. Uh, we've done some safety mitigation because of the flood, mm -hmm. and we also got really far behind on our mowing and had lots of phone calls about, hey, you guys quit us? No, we're coming. It's just been really, really, really busy. Um, Don is focusing hard on uh, maybe getting back on river road uh, tomorrow. Uh, try to put a couple of guys continue to mow, but that river road project is uh, We started it and then we had a catastrophe and so <laughs> it's been a while But we're going to get back on it. Our grade all should be delivered today uh, Probably here by noon or so uh, And we'll be able to get that thing really gone over good and get it up to speed, but uh, Those folks on river road. We haven't forgot you. <laughs> we're coming back chop chop now, that one has the air conditioner, and you all are going to air condition the other one also. Is that no? Not yet. Not yet. We're, until we can find a little bit cheaper source, <coughs> I don't, you know, I don't want to just take one price that I felt was uh, high. Uh, I'd like a chance to look around. Uh, I think Ray come up with ASCO that we needed to check with ASCO. Was that you? No. Uh, quality glass. Uh, quali we did check with quality glass. Okay. They will. They won't do it. It's a big, heavy piece of equipment. But I think ASCO is a great all dealer, and we have not asked them about what they can do for us. So we'll just look at that. We got a hydraulic ram on the second great all that we're going to either. I think they've had it rebuilt once, and it still leaks. We may have to replace uh, about a three foot <coughs> hydraulic ram. Uh, don't know the cost of that just yet. We're going to take the old one to McMurray Machine Shop, which does an outstanding job with mm -hmm. hydraulic cylinders, and let them kind of lead us on the path that we need to take, either <coughs> try to repair that one or just get a new one. Sometimes <coughs> a polish shaft can just be replaced. Okay. So, okay. Um, well, you won't need that air conditioner until next week or later because it's right. It's only going to get just over a hundred. Right. Week, so right. 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 It's not a big deal inside that glass cab. All right. Anything else? We do have a general budget discussion uh, set up for now. Uh, what I'd like to do is for us to take maybe a short recess, come in here. I've got a few things to go over on what Mr. Wall has that y'all may have to bring up. But if we could do that. I do want to announce we have a session this afternoon that's posted for 2 o'clock in room 200 of the... Uh, uh, Galaxy Building, uh, we have people there from the Governor's Division of Emergency Management to uh, give us a, a briefing on things we can claim do, how to work maybe some with our individuals. But the big thing I'm interested in is whether they're where we're getting to on the buyout program. We've got four to six homes, and quite honestly, that's what ought to happen to them. But those funds have not been designated yet. Uh, to the state, uh, but we've got uh, two homes down in Wrangler's Retreat. This is their third time since those have been built to be significantly flooded. We've got three more out off Huntington that really ought to be in that consideration, uh, and, and hopefully they'll have <coughs> have some answers today or maybe some timelines. But 
what we've tried to tell, and I don't feel the reluctance is at the state, is to let the federal government know. You know, while you're standing here, you think, oh, well, two months sometimes isn't a long time. If you're like the Burton family living with all of the wallboard cut out halfway up, and you've got your bed, a card table, and two chairs, and you're trying to live there long enough to know, are they going to go ahead and buy it out, or should I go ahead and spend the money to repair it or not? That's a lousy situation to be in, but uh, I, I have talked to the chief Jim kid who's head of the deal for the state. He has asked the feds to try to get something set up and get this done. Because uh, even if they said yesterday, it's a process that's going to take 30 to 45 days at best, uh, and we've had the experience of buying three of those houses, and it's not necessarily a smooth process. But what happens to the home after we purchase it? Uh, it's torn down, and this is all part of what's the process in it, Commissioner. The home is actually torn down. The, the owner gets money to do that as part of the settlement agreement. Uh, we work with them on getting that done. Uh, they tear it down. The land is cleared, leveled, and it becomes county land forever. You can't build anything on it. Uh, right. We have three of those lots down in Wrangler's Retreat. If they buy those other two homes, we'll have that whole uh, northeast side of Wrangler's Retreat from the end of it back uh, about quarter mile will all be county no man's land. Yeah. We'd be required to keep that mowed and cleaned no, up. We don't have, no. It's we, leased out right now. We've got okay. it leased. People are using it. They For, can graze on it and they okay. put a five strand barbed wire fence on there. They can't do anything that's going to restrict water flow in the area. Right. So we've had some of that. Uh, you know, and, and uh, Commissioner Gonzalez watches after that in that area. So, Sheriff. Does this home you do buy out, uh, is it a requirement that the homeowner or the property owner has to tear it down, or is it something that the county can take over as far as like those houses being used in county fire training uh, for fire department all the way down the county to the remainder of cleanup? I think they have to determine it whether asbestos has to be abated first. That, that it's the federal government's money, so the process is bigger than the, you know, the well, actual want job. To talk about having any that old asbestos siding on it. Yeah, and I don't think uh, two of the structures I know are brick structures. Three burdens is probably a combination of right. some sort of siding. That, that's, but yeah, the, the sixth home. Uh, that I think uh, I have not seen that one. It sits way back off the road off of Huntington and curls back there. It's probably only 200 yards from FM 367, but you absolutely can't see that house there. I, or at least yeah, I haven't picked out which one it is. Do we uh, take bids, judge on those, and tear yes. those properties down? It's, it's a bid process. Uh, and like I say, it's fairly, but it all goes through. and. The guy that did those for us all last time is out of the business now. So it's a typical federal program, you handle more paper than you do material. <laughs> yeah, I dare say there's more trees destroyed yeah. than we'll have lumber from from tearing them down. From tearing them down, and all. Okay, it is uh, 11:20. Let's try to come back at 11:30. Uh,